working on a large Stuart model steam plant of part 13, looking at the ceramic burner, setting the safety valve and steaming the Twin Victoria. The large ceramic burner is just held in place by four bolts, and by slackening off these bolts I'm able to withdraw the ceramic burner and look what's inside here. This boiler has a large centre flue, and it's of the water tube type, and here are the water tubes, many of them, and radiating beautifully all the way down the centre flue. And quite apart from it looking very pretty and very well made, this is a great way of generating steam in a model steam boiler. I've fitted the gas regulator to the large gas tank, now it's time to test the burner. Well that's if I can get it to light that is. My conclusion from this test is it's not a good idea to use a gas regulator on a butane tank. Even after a while this is as hot as it got and it's not hot at all really. I used to have a gas tap assembly just like this one that fitted into the top of a camping gas cylinder, the larger one, but unfortunately I lost it. So I've had to make do, I have this gas valve and I've fitted it to a small gas cylinder. Thinking about it, if I knew what the thread was in the top of a camping gas cylinder, then I could easily make a gas tank adapter for the larger tank. So if any experts out there know what the thread sizes are on camping gas cylinders, please let me know. As you can clearly see, the burner is burning very well using this system. All I'll have to do now is turn off the gas and refit the ceramic burner to the boiler. I think I would prefer 7BA hexagon bolts to clamp the burner into the boiler, but these will have to do for now. I'm going to steam test the boiler and while I'm at it set the safety valve, but first of all, because I don't have a hand pump connected, I'm removing the safety valve from the top of the boiler. I have this small grey funnel, and ages ago I made a brass adapter for it which is threaded to screw into a safety valve bush on the top of a boiler. The trouble is it's only a small funnel, so what I do is wedge in a larger one, that way I don't slop water all over the top of the boiler. In no time at all the water starts to creep up the sight glass, and if you look closely at the water in the sight glass you can see there are particles in it, that's because I haven't blown down this boiler. And why haven't I done that? Well it isn't fitted with a blow down valve, that's a bit of an oversight, on a boiler of this size I would have thought it would have had a blow down valve fitted, so you could blow down the boiler at the end of a run to clean it out. Boiler blow down valves are usually fitted at the lowest point in the boiler. By holding a gas lighter over the chimney and opening the gas valve, the boiler is now lit. This is a 6 inch diameter boiler so it holds a lot of water. I think what I'll do, whilst it's raising steam, is shut the inner door of the workshop and go into the outer part of the workshop to paint the baseboard black. And in the outer part of the workshop, the actual outer door of the shed to the outside world is open. So I'm really close to an open door, and besides which, when I spray paint like this, I hold my breath. From the inside of the workshop I heard this go off. It's a carbon monoxide alarm which is telling me, by beeping like this, that there is carbon monoxide present in the workspace. This is no good at all. So what did I do? Temporarily I removed the batteries from the carbon monoxide alarm and went back into the outer part of the workshop with the inner door shut and continued painting the baseboard. Carbon monoxide is a very dangerous substance. So if you have carbon monoxide in your workspace, remove the source of the carbon monoxide and vacate the workspace immediately. Do not remove the batteries from the carbon monoxide alarm like I did. With all the doors in the workshop now open, I set the safety valve to the correct pressure, as described in the previous episode using circuit pliers, not forgetting to tighten the locking ring once the adjustment had been reached. And before anyone comments, I am not making this sound, it's coming from the safety valve fitted to the boiler. This occasionally happens, particularly when safety valves are new. As the safety valve pops, it makes this noise that sounds like flatulence. They usually settle down and don't make the noise. It's really down to the amount of heat that's been applied. This burner is only just adequate enough for this size of boiler. With a much fiercer fire, whether it's a coal fire or a large blow lamp, what would happen is you would get this sound initially followed by the safety valve blowing off continuously, making a loud hissing noise. Not like the Stuart valve that makes a noise like a trumpet all the time. That used to drive me nuts, I didn't like it at all. What I'm doing at the moment is lubricating the engine, 
I've temporarily connected the engine to the boiler because it seems such a waste to not steam the engine when I have so much steam in the boiler. Don't forget though, the first steam that reaches the cylinders once I open the steam valve immediately condenses to water. So now I have cylinders full of water, that's why I have to start it manually. Initially there's a knocking noise, but this disappears once the water is evacuated from each end of the cylinders. 60 pounds per square inch is a ridiculous amount of pressure for an engine like this unless it was under an extreme load. The valve on the boiler turret is almost closed, but as you can hear the engine is consuming just enough steam to prevent the safety valve from blowing off, so this is the ideal situation. 60 pounds on the gauge and the engine running perfectly well. If I really rev the engine I would think the pressure will drop down to possibly 50 pounds per square inch, but if I run the engine slowly it soon creeps back up to 60. That's it for this episode, I'm going to stop the narration and just let you listen to the sound and see the engine running. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. And before I forget, after the run of a cast iron cylinder engine, you must always blow out the water with an airline and add some steam oil. I'm doing this in one fell swoop by applying the steam oil to the airline fitting. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website. Click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.